Doom, doom, doom. Another one bites the dust. Doom, doom, doom. Another one bites the dust. And another one down. And another one down. Another one bites the dust. Oh, hey, this is Tony, also known as Blessed Brother. Angie Stewart, Blessed Sister. And we have a special one for you today. The title of this one is The Not So Secrets of Why Businesses Fail. The Not So Secrets of Why Businesses Fail. You know, um, we had an experience today. Uh, eating the way we eat with the plant-based diet that we eat, it is always unique to be able to find places that can accommodate us. You know, it's not like we can just go down to McDonald's and get a hamburger. There's certain restaurants that we have to find that have things that cater to our digestive or our dietary standards. So anyway, we happened to find one. And I was so excited when I found this place. Uh, it was something I found through a Facebook group and it was here local. And I thought, man, this is gonna be awesome. Another option for us to get some uh, dinner and so forth. Well, uh, we've been there now, for, this is our, today was our third time? Third or four? I think more than three times. Okay, more than three, okay, maybe four. Um, and we came away with some observations. You know, they always say that a, a business, you know, there's a high percentage rate that a business fails within the first five years. And there's all kinds of factors as to why that happens and so forth and so on. Um, but one of the factors is because they deserve to fail. Um, this particular restaurant is not a standalone mom and pop shop. It's part of a franchise. And what that says to me that is because it's a part of a franchise, they bought into a system. Mm -hmm. a system that had been successful somewhere else. And because it was so successful, they took that same system and they brought it here to our area. And I'm sure they had ways to what the menu was supposed to look like, the food preparation is supposed to go a certain way, so forth and so on. There is a system. That's the reason why franchises have a higher success rate than just a business from ground up, mm -hmm. all right? But here's what we experienced. We went there and the place was empty. I guess that should have been a sign because we've never <laughs> been there and the place has been full, have we? No. I was surprised that the place had been around for over a year. Yes, now we do need to make sure it's clear. It's not just plant-based food that they're serving. So no. they're serving pretty much any type. Right, of right. So we went, and so I was surprised, shocked actually, when they told me that this place had been there for over a year. So that meant that there were some marketing issues, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so places pretty much empty every time we've gone there. And the service and the third strike is that they don't have a very expansive menu. There's only a few things on their menu. Literally, the last two times we've gone there, one third of their menu has been unavailable, out of stock. And this is not two days in a row. This is one day and then almost a week later, another day. One third of the menu not available. Lastly, the service was slow. I mean, they must have cooked it in a pressure cooker slow. I mean, crock pot, crock pot slow. slow, all right? And you know, you can feel yourself age as you are waiting <laughs> for your food. You know, you go in there not needing a haircut and leave there needing one. All right, that kind of place. So you look at those factors, and I looked at my wife, and I looked at her, and I said, honey, this place is about to leave. It's about to go. It's in one of those places, part of a little strip mall where there's been a number of businesses there before. This is the latest one. And I can tell you with all certainty, the day is going to come, probably not too long from now, that we're going to call, and nobody's going to answer. And in somewhat of a fluent area. Right. Yeah, that's not a bad neighborhood or anything like that. So here's my point. These businesses are failing because they deserve to. They're not even following a proven success formula, okay? When you are in business, you have to think about the customer. Your focus has to be on the customer. Someone said, I was in a class earlier today that talked about uh, leadership and building effective teams. And one of the things that they uh, talked about, the guy speaking at Harvard, he said, what's the purpose of a business? And the first thing that people said was the purpose of a business is to make a profit. No, no, no. 
he corrected them. And he said, the purpose of a business is to obtain and retain a customer. Because if you put a focus on that, everything else will fall in place. Now you might say, well, that doesn't apply to me. I don't have a business. I'm telling you that for two reasons. And I'll tell you those two reasons after Angie tells you a scripture that relates to what we're talking about. Take Hello. it away. Hello, Marlo. Thanks for joining. Yeah. Hey, Marlo. So the scripture for today, first in the King James Version, Colossians 3.23, and whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, not to men. Now in the Passion Translation. Put your whole heart and soul into every activity you do as though you are doing it for the Lord himself, not merely for others. If you think about that, yeah. customer amazements might come to play. That's right. And you might think more of Disney versus the place we went, the today. Place we went today. And you see, here's the thing about that. You might say, well, I don't have a business. Guess what? You do have a business. It's called you incorporate. Yes. You have a business. And if you look at all your dealings from what that verse just said, doing things not as unto men, but as unto the Father, unto God, mm -hmm. it's going to bring you up to a higher level of effectiveness, a higher level of activity, mm -hmm. a higher standard. Mm -hmm. You see, now, I don't blame, you know, now, every time we've gone there, we've never seen anyone there who looks like they probably own that franchise. Right. So they delegated that out. These kids don't understand the verse I just had Angie read to you. They don't understand that. So they're not trying. They're trying to get paid so they can go out on the weekend and party. They're not thinking about how to do things as unto the Lord, and it's obvious in what it shows up. But there is an owner who should be there, who should be looking, who should be making sure that these folks who are representing him and or her, and yes. representing yeah. their investment is doing the right things with it. Well, they're not there. They're not present, and the standard is dropping. And I'm telling you, that's not the way to have a business that succeeds. So as you go into businesses, I encourage you, especially as you're using your consumer dollar, look at those businesses. Think about those businesses and how they're portraying themselves. Are they positioned for success or not? Learn from the things that the ones that are positioned for success are doing and apply that to you incorporated. Look at the things that the ones who are not positioned for success, look at those while they're still there and make sure that you're not taking something that you see them doing. Make sure you're not doing it with you incorporated. Mm -hmm. I hope you get this because this is something that all around us we have examples of things that we should be modeling and examples of things that we don't or should not be. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I remember once someone said that everyone's life is either a a um, <laughs> a model or an example of what not to do. <laughs> Make sure you're on that first one, that you're someone to be modeled yes. and not an example of someone who you don't want to be like. Yes. So anyway, anything else you want to say, babe? No. That pretty much sums it up. We right. could actually talk about a whole lot of other ones on the same topic, but yes. we won't do that today. No, just, you know, and again, demand service for your consumer dollar mm -hmm. that meets your standards. And be nice about it, though. Be nice about it. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you to go in and kick doors in and all that <laughs> stuff. But also, at the same time, have a higher standard for yourself mm -hmm. and you incorporate it. Yeah. Be blessed. We'll see you tomorrow.